Welcome to Dad Tech. Today we have a very special episode. For the first time on this channel, we have Kid Tech. <laughs> Welcome, buddy. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. You excited for today's build? Yeah. Okay, go. cool. Today we'll be building two DJI RoboMaster S1s. DJI has generally been known for its consumer level drones, but over the past few years, they've been sponsoring RoboMaster competitions across the globe. This is the byproduct of those competitions. And today we'll be building it and then taking it outside for a test run. Yeah. Let's get to the build. Okay, so that was about five hours worth of build time for both vehicles. The first one took a little bit longer than the second one. We weren't quite as familiar with the components and the steps to actually get it built during the first build. But once we got to the second one and we understood what steps it took from you know the first to the last to get that one accomplished, this one definitely went a lot smoother and faster. Don't you feel like it went yeah, faster? Yeah, faster. Yeah, so the instructions were really easy to follow, very detailed. Everything kind of snapped together. Again, the diagrams really helped a lot, but I would make it uh, make the comparison to a an advanced Lego set, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe like an adult Lego version is the level of complexity that this build was. Really good build quality overall. You can feel the heft. It's certainly beefier than its DJI drone cousins. Most of it is plastic. You do have some metal here in the turret section. Speaking of the turret, I think this this is the coolest part of the robot itself, right? It definitely feel like it has a chappy from the movie look here with, with the antennas. The other cool part is the turret actually fires two different projectiles, one of which is infrared light, which Jason just showed you there. And the other are these little gel beads that you soak in water for about four hours. It doesn't hurt you. It's really soft, but it's not made to shoot at like human beings or pets. It's only supposed to be made to shoot at other DJI uh, RoboMaster. You know, Jason's kind of moving it around. It's super easy to control on the Android or iOS app. The other part that I really like about it are the wheels. The wheels here aren't your typical like you know, car wheels or anything of that nature. These are called mechanism wheels. The way it's built is a bunch of rollers at a 45 degree angle that actually allows the vehicle to move side to side laterally and then front to back without having to have the typical piston and shifting, you know, mechanisms that a typical car would have. A cool part about it too, besides the fact that it can be controlled by an app, DJI sells this gamepad, which allows you to put your phone into the actual game pad so you get tighter control control with the joystick. Now that we've got it built, super cool. We're gonna go test it out and fight amongst each other. There's three different versions that you could use inside the app. There's a solo version if you only have one of these things that allows you to kind of drive around. There's a battle version which Jay and I are gonna go test out which allows you to kind of shoot at each other, right? And you have hit points. Both vehicles have hit points and you either use the laser or the pellets and certain sections of the body have these little indicators here that detect hits to the actual body and it depletes your HP, which is very cool. It's like a, like a fake video game, except in real life. So yeah, we're gonna go take this out for, for a run and then we'll come back with final thoughts.
So the DJI RoboMaster S1 is supposed to be designed for kids ages 14 and up. But Jay here at nine years old had no issues following the instructions and building out both of these units. So again, as a STEM project, this is one of the most polished ones you could ever possibly run into. It is not, however, on the cheap side. At $500 per unit, it is definitely expensive. But because of the fact that it comes with a scratch interface, a Python interface, it has automated templates that you can use to create really some of the most complicated motions for these types of units. It really gives you the best bang for your buck in terms of being able to introduce your kids into robotics and coding and them being able to get output for their coding efforts. So, you know, in terms of being able to utilize it to the fullest capacity, I certainly recommend it. Again, it is not cheap, but if you have a child who's really into STEM or you really want to get your child into STEM, to me, this is a worthy investment as a father who's into STEM and toys, who wants to get their kid who's also into STEM and toys into the world of robotics and coding. There is no other better way to get into it than this. And again, you do pay a premium for it, but you see it in the build quality. You see it in the software resources that comes along with the product. I definitely recommend it. What do you think, Jay? I thought it was really cool, but hard because... But the hard part makes it a good toy because you put in the effort to build it and it turns out as this. Which is super cool, right? Yeah. So again, this won't be our last build, but it certainly will be one of the best ones. And again, you pay the premium for it, but I feel like once you get your kids onto this, you'll be hooked on STEM. Um, and it's a great way, like I said, to get them introduced into it. So with that, we appreciate you joining us. This was super awesome to build. Thank you again, and we appreciate you guys, and we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.